Hello everyone and welcome to Autodesk Webinar's AutoCAD Back to Basics series. Uh, my name is Scott Green and I'll be your presenter today. Along with me is Zach Travis and he'll be our moderator for this session. And we also have another uh, guest moderator here. We have Nauman and he's a Autodesk expert elite. So uh, let me just go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about myself here. So. I've been working here at Autodesk uh, for, for about uh, two years now as a technical support specialist. This is my uh, third webinar. I'm here at the Lake Oswego office in the United States, and uh, currently I'm supporting um, AutoCAD-based uh, products, uh, specifically Plant 3D, along with uh, BIM 360 Glue. And in the past, I've supported Navisworks and uh, Revit. Uh, Zach, would you uh, like to say a few words about yourself? Sure. My name is Zach Travis. I'm also out of the Lake Oswego, Oregon uh, location. I've been supporting Autodesk products for a little over 10 years now. And uh, you see there AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, Map 3D, Raster Design. I mainly specialize in AutoCAD Electrical these days. And AutoSketch is still there whenever we happen to get a case on that as well. And Nalman, is there anything else uh, you'd like to add about yourself? So we've got Nalman again, and he's from uh, Westchester, Westchester, and uh, he's an Autodesk expert elite. No? Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So, again, welcome to Autodesk Help webinar series. This is the first... Um, webinar broadcast of 2016 and so here we have your build your AutoCAD IQ live it's hosted by uh, us folks here at uh, Autodesk Technical Support uh, it'll be about a uh, 45 minute presentation followed by um, a questions and answers se uh, section uh, so upcoming um, the next webinars we have upcoming in the next couple months, we have uh, Beyond the Basics, um, the third dimension at the uh, end of the month along with tips and tricks. And then in February, we're going back to the basics again with uh, Zach and myself. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, TD drafting. <clears throat> and uh, let's see here, before we get started. Feel free to leave questions in the questions chat window uh, with Zach and Nelman, and they'll be able to answer as those questions come in. Um, also, uh, again, there will be uh, some time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. This session will be recorded, and afterwards, links will be made available. Um, there's going to be a registration reminder um, and post-webinar survey for the next webinars. Um, You'll have your chat window, and let's see here, we got some Autodesk Knowledge Network featured articles come up here. So we have some top uh, Autodesk Knowledge Network downloads and articles. So we got uh, coordination model, um, all snap support article, uh, visual basic applications module article, um, and the 2015 service pack number two. Uh, some free education software for students and teachers articles coming up, and uh, we've got some other articles here. So 2016 hot fixes, got two of those, and some quick links. So this week's agenda includes uh, first launch and game start, locations and functions of interface elements in the user interface, and the organization of tools in the user interface. Let's see, we got a question here. Paul here, why don't you go ahead and, Zach, why don't you go ahead and start one of those polls here. We have a poll coming up. If everyone can take a moment and answer that poll. Okay, so let's move on here. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and we're going to start with a, um, our presentation of the UI. OK. 
Okay. So let's see those poll results come in here. Uh, looks like that poll's closed. Looks like it says, is this your first Audis help webinar? So we got 72% uh, saying no and 28% uh, saying yes. So I'd just like to thank you guys for coming back here. And for those of you that's your uh, first time at Audis webinar, uh, well, welcome. So now we are going over here with another poll question here that's coming up. Just one more here. Uh, so which AutoCAD-based applications do you use? Let's see, most of them are coming in as AutoCAD LT. Uh, good percentage is AutoCAD, but we also have a lot of the verticals coming in here. We got uh, architecture, MEP, mechanical, plant, and civil, and uh, map 3D coming in about tied. But it looks like most of you are using AutoCAD LT right now, so we are going to go ahead and get into uh, the presentation of the user interface. All right, so here on the screen here, you start out, when you start the program, you start out on this create page. Okay, so when you first start Biocad 2016, you'll notice our start screen here, and on the left-hand side, you'll see the get started with a large button that says start drawing. Let's go over here. And underneath will be a drop-down menu for your template. So pressing this will create a new drawing. There we go. And it loads up with the design feed on the left-hand side. Let's go back to the Start tab here. And I mentioned the templates. So underneath here on the templates, if you click on the little uh, little triangle, it'll drop down and then it'll show a list of some of the default templates that are included in this software. So everything that I'm showing you here, uh, I reset to default so this is exactly how it should be coming up uh, after you install the program and you do a first run. <clears throat> so beneath uh, the big start button here and the templates uh, drop down menu, we have the, the buttons for open up files open a sheet set, get more templates online, and explore sample drawings. Um, you should note that in the middle of the screen under recent documents, uh, on the first start of the program, you're going to also see the sample files there. So if you click on open files, you will see that uh, you can open files from A360 if you have an A360 account. Uh, you can see your uh, file history, uh, your documents folder, favorites, uh, you can connect to FTP um, to your desktop or to Buzzsaw. And again, AutoCAD should be able to open up drawing files, so DWGs, um, drawing standards, DWSs, DXF files, and drawing template files. Let's talk a little bit more about the create page here. So recent documents. So by default, it's going to go to this middle tab here, which will show smaller thumbnails along with a little bit of uh, file details. But there's two other modes as well. So to the left here, it's larger thumbnails, and then it has a files name, but no details. And then to the right, we have no uh, thumbnails. It's just all details here. And then next to this, on the right-hand side, uh, we have Connect. And there you can sign in to A360, or you can go ahead and send us feedback. Uh, if you click on the Send Feedback uh, button, it will open up a browser page uh, to the Audesk Contact Us uh, product feedback form here. And so if you would like to leave um, some comments or suggestions with our development team uh, for uh, the AutoCAD products, you can go ahead and enter your email address, country, um, the AutoCAD product that you have here, one of the verticals, if you have a vertical, uh, the year it's released, and then you can add in your comments and then hit submit, and that should go to our development team, and they do take a, a look at these. So let's go back to the user interface. And we're going to switch over to the Learn page here. And uh, to do that, you either have on the center bottom 
of the user interface, you have um, a tab here for learn. Or on the left-hand side here, you have an uh, arrow button also going to learn. So let's go ahead and go to learn. So on the learn page, it's broken up into also three sections. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have uh, what's new. So these are our newest help videos here, and so we have two of them up right now uh, for AutoCAD 2016 uh, New Features Overview Part 1 and 2. Uh, in the middle, we have Game Started videos. Uh, here are some of our most popular videos, uh, help videos here. So we have uh, Touring the User Interface, which uh, is what we'll be doing today. Uh, how to create uh, 2D objects, modify 2D objects, uh, that should be included in the next um, webinar that we're going to be doing. So as I mentioned, for uh, Zach and I, we're going to talk about 2D drafting next, uh, next month in February. And then along here are featured uh, videos. And then finally on the right-hand side, we have learning tips. So you can hit these arrow buttons. Uh, let's go next, and I'll just give you some tips. Here we have a tip on the XREF override command, and clicking more information uh, will expand on this, and should take you to a help page. So clicking any of those will take you to the corresponding help page. So we can just cycle through a few of these. And down below this, we have our online resources. So here are some additional training materials that should uh, be able to help you. Uh, we have Hitchhiker's AutoCAD Basics. And then we have the uh, option here to contact Autodesk um, support and then also to check out uh, exclu exclusive online training offers. So we're going to move along here and go back to that uh, drawing tab um, for the new drawing that we just created. Again, it's just going to be a blank drawing. And here we have the design feed. And again, from here, you can log into your A360 account, or you can create a new A360, A360 account if you don't already have one. So we can go ahead and close this, unless, uh, Zach, do you have anything to add about the design feed? Any features you'd like to mention? Uh, the design feed is, is pretty helpful. Uh, for anybody who hasn't explored it, there are some help topics related to it, so I invite you to check those out because it's, it's fairly nifty. Um, I would say it's based on speaking to customers, it's a largely underutilized resource, but uh, if, you know, if you do check out the, the help topics related to it, you may find some features in there you want to use and decide to integrate them in your workflow. But um, for the most part, through the rest of this, we'll have it closed out, so it'll be out of the way. Okay, thanks, Zach. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that, as Zach mentioned. And again, we're here in the new drawing, and by default, uh, when you create a new drawing, it's going to throw you into model space. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, again later, but uh, down here at the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see some tabs here. Uh, one of them is model, and that is for the model space which you are in now. Then we have a couple of layout tabs, and we'll be talking about the layout tabs and paper space. So above the model space, again, you'll see tabs here, start and drawing, and so you can keep on clicking uh, this plus sign here to create new drawings. Uh, when you load up another drawing, for example, if you load up a, uh, a sample drawing, it's going to create a new tab here. And you can switch between tabs and therefore switch between drawings. And above this, we have um, what's going to be sort of like your, your main uh, tool here uh, in the user interface. It's, it's the ribbon. And the ribbon is broken up into um, ribbon panels uh, as a way to organize uh, groups of specific commands. And those uh, panels are organized into tabs. So up here above uh, the ribbon panels, we have the different tabs, home, insert, annotate, parametric, view, manage, output, add-ins, 
uh, so on and so forth, and you can edit those, which ones are displayed, or you can add different ones. Um, so we're going to go into this now. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the ribbon here. We're going to um, also show you the quick access toolbar and the app menu. So up above the ribbon here, we have uh, what's called the quick access toolbar. A lot of these commands you'll find within the ribbon itself or within the app uh, application uh, menu. So if uh, you go up there and you click on the little piece of paper up here, that's the new um, button here and I'll create a new blank drawing file. Uh, next to it is open and then we have save, save as, then print and plot. And you can also add or remove uh, buttons here. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, we have a undo and uh, redo uh, buttons here. So if you happen to make a mistake, you can hit undo and I'll just take you back uh, before you enter in that command. And so let's take a look at uh, customization of the quick access toolbar. So at the end of this, you have this little drop down arrow here. If you click on that, it's going to open up the customized quick access toolbar uh, menu. And here you can uh, add or remove additional functions. So if you want to display what workspace you're working in, you can click on that and it's going to add that over here. And again, by default, you're going to start off in the drafting annotations uh, workspace. Um, for those of you who have uh, LT, uh, this will be your main workspace. Um, for core AutoCAD users, you also have your 3D uh, basics and modeling tools. And also, um, we can talk about this in a, uh, another webinar, but uh, you can customize uh, workspaces as well and uh, save them out and then modify specific settings. Going back to the Customize Quick Access Toolbar menu, uh, we have a few other things um, we can add here. We can add uh, some additional uh, plot and uh, print functions, properties, or you can customize uh, further. Or you can also show this quick, quick access toolbar uh, below the ribbon if you'd like. Let's go over to the application menu real quick here. Again, um, it has a lot of the same commands that's up on the quick access toolbar. And so you have the uh, red AutoCAD symbol here, this triangle. And so you have uh, your new drawing, open drawings, save and save as uh, functions. But you also have other tools here such as export. So if you want to export the drawing out as a DWF or DWFX file, you can do that there or as a uh, PDF or other formats. You can also publish and print from this panel. And another really useful feature is the drawing utilities. So uh, oftentimes in support, uh, we see cases coming in talking about uh, uh, corrupt files. We cannot open up the file. Well, we do include some tools that you can use to try to repair the files yourself. So uh, some good tools are um, the recovery tool. If, uh, if you can't open up a file, you'd want to go ahead and try to open up the file with a recovery. Uh, tool here and you can do recovery with or without your XRFs. Also we have purge which is another useful tool so it can um, remove unused or corrupted elements here so you can purge out block definitions and layers from the drawing. And another great function is audit. So you can evaluate the integrity of drawing and, and also correct some errors. So this will help with some drawing corruption. But again, if you can't open up the drawing, uh, you're going to want to use re uh, Recover. Uh, a few other things here on the end. We have options and uh, then also a button to exit uh, Autodesk Autocad 2016. So if we click on options, They'll come up with the options dialog box. Here you have tabs for uh, files options, display options, open and save options, uh, your plot and publishing options, um, such as uh, if you're seeing up um, default uh, printing device, uh, some system options here. Um, 
such as graphics performance. Now, this is also uh, available on the status bar and as a uh, command line function here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We also have our user preferences, drafting, uh, some 3D modeling options, your selection options, uh, profiles, and online options. So the great thing about profiles is uh, you can go ahead and customize your user interface a little bit more here. You can create a profile that will save all your settings out. And then if you happen to uh, create a different profile with different settings, you can save, add it, delete it, export to a different user if you want uh, some of your other users using the uh, same standard settings and so forth. You can reset back to defaults down here. So let's get out of that. And let's talk more about the ribbon here. Again, as I mentioned before, it's uh, broken down into panels and then uh, sorted by uh, tabs based on functions. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about the first tab here, uh, the home tab. And this will have your basic drawing, modification, annotation, layer, block properties, groups, utilities, clipboard, and view functions here. And again, it's organized into these panels here. So you have uh, some basic drawing commands here. Lines, polylines, circles, and arcs, and further commands down here. So some of the panels will have this drop down, and some will not. But if you click on the drop down for draw, you'll see additional function here, like spline, uh, construction lines, rays. Moving over here, we have um, the modify tools that also has a drop down here so you can uh, set layers and change spaces. <clears throat> annotation here so you can add uh, annotation and dimensions, uh, add leaders to the annotations and then set uh, the annotation or text settings. And then layers, you can organize your uh, layers here and change the layer properties. And then you have your uh, blocks here, some simple block tools. And then your properties tools. And then groups, utilities, clipboard, and view. And again, you may see some of these tabs and you may not see some of these tabs when you first start some of these um, can be added in by going to um, the tab list up top above the ribbon panels and clicking, uh, right-clicking the blank space here. And then going down to show tabs and show panels. So it looks like by default um, on each tab it should be showing all the panels. However, not all the tabs will be displayed, so you can go up to show tabs and you can see that uh, I do not have 3D tools or visualize displayed right now, so I'm going to go ahead and check mark those. And again, if you don't like the position of a ribbon, you can go ahead and undock it and then move it around. Okay, let's move to the insert tab. Uh, this will uh, contain functions for your block attributes, block definitions and references, point clouds, imports, data, linking, location settings, and design center content. And again, you see that they are broken down by ribbon panels. And some of these do, in fact, have drop-down menus, such as block and block def definitions. Uh, and some of them do not, such as point cloud, import data, and the ones here on the end. So let's go ahead and check these out real quick. So again, you can create a block from here, set block definitions, manage attributes, or edit the block. And additional commands are below. Let's move on to annotate. So again, in the home tab, uh, you saw that we did have some annotation functions there, but we also have a whole uh, set of ribbon panels devoted to annotation. So here we have our tools for multi-line text. And again, you can set the multi-line text uh, settings here. Or add more commands, such as the scale of the text. Uh, your dimension commands 
multi-layer commands, tables, markups, and annotation scaling. So let's just take a quick look at the differences between this and uh, the Home tab. So you can see everything in the Annotations tab is condensed into one panel here on the Home tab. And then in Annotate, it's expanded out. So that's the main difference there. So moving on to Parametric. Uh, the Parametric tab has your geometric constraints, dimensional constraints, and constraint management functions. And again, some of them do have a drop-down from the panel. Now, moving on to 3D tools, and as I said before, um, AutoCAD LT will not have these 3D tools, um, so you won't be able to create 3D blo uh, blocks, but uh, in Core AutoCAD, we do have uh, this functionality, and it does change uh, by workspace, so we can go ahead and switch over to that later on here. But uh, here, on 3D Tools tab, you'll have your advanced 3D block modeling tools, uh, your solid um, editing tools, surfacing tools, meshes, sectioning tools, selection tools, and coordinate tools for 3D objects here. So you can create a box. If you click on that, and go to the UCS over here in the corner, upper right-hand corner, and click a uh, like an isometric view. There we have a, a nice 3D uh, box. Let's move on to Visualize. And the Visualize tab will have functions for lighting, uh, sun location, materials, camera settings, animations, rendering views, coordinates, visual styles, model viewports, and cloud rendering. Um, the visual styles is quite useful. So if you're, say, not uh, doing drafting, but rather 3D modeling, you can click on this and change uh, the view style. So we have several view styles here. Let's just uh, pick conceptual for a different effect. Go back to uh, the model space and click on a isometric view. And then now you have um, a bit of uh, filling out of this 3D box. So it doesn't just look like uh, some drafting lines here. So there's a bit of shading going on. Let's set this back to 2D wireframe. And again, I just want to show you real quick uh, the differences between workspaces. We talked about uh, 3D tools. If we go down to 3D Basics, we will see some uh, core AutoCAD specific tools here again. So we have um, one of the original panels here from the 3D Tools uh, tab, but with additional functions here. So you can do press pull, you can create polygons, you can offset. Uh, you can apply filters to the 3D objects, and you can set world coordinates for the 3D objects. And again, also you can change the visual style. And again, we have similar functions under uh, the 3D modeling workspace. So you see how that changes there. Uh, some of the panels are reorganized. Some uh, tools from various other tabs are incorporated into uh, this workspace. So let's go back to drafting, since uh, this shares commonality between LT and Core AutoCAD. And so we were on the Visualize tab. And so if you switch back to your workspace, you'll see that that's gone now. So we have to go ahead and re-add that. Let's move on to the View tab. So the View tab will contain options for viewport tools, viewport models, palettes, and interface. So here you can change, uh, modify the view cube and the UCS, change the navigation bar. So again, the view cube and the UCS is over here in the upper right-hand corner. You can use this to manipulate your perspective of the model. 
and set your world co coordinates or user coordinates. Moving on to the Manage tab. Uh, it has tools for recording your actions, customization of the user interface further, uh, loading applications, and uh, importing CAD standards. So uh, again, in a later uh, webinar, we're going to talk a little bit more about the CUI. If you click on that, you can go ahead and edit, uh, modify, customize your user interface here, or load up a customization file that's already been created. Moving on to the Output tab, we have additional uh, print and plot functions here. So again, some of these were found in the Quick Access Toolbar or in the Application menu. You have Plot, Batch Plot, Preview. And then moving on to Add-ins. This is quite nice. So, for add-ins, uh, you can explore um, our App Exchange, which is now called the App Store, and uh, there we have additional uh, applications to add in, so, you know, various plugins uh, for the program that were uh, user created uh, to uh, give users some additional functionality. So if there's some tools that you would like that aren't included in the core program, you can search the App Store and see if uh, there's any add-ins there. Let's move on to A360. Okay, so in A360, um, you'll have your tools for collaboration. So you're going to see tools for A360 Drive, A360 Sync, and the design feed. And then also you can save out those settings and import them to uh, another user, export them out. Let's go over to Express Tools. And here uh, you'll have features for your blocks, text, uh, layouts, hatches, dimensioning, um, Basically, various tools that uh, uh, we thought uh, in user experience and other users uh, have thought that uh, could be useful. So we have these extra features here. So we have blocks. You can convert a block to XREF, for example, explode um, attributes on a block or replace a block. Um, and so they're not really organized by themes, as you can see. Uh, each panel has its own theme, so it's not one overriding theme, but some very useful tools up here. Uh, Zach? Just wanted to quickly point out that the Express tools, for LT users, you're not going to see those in there. Uh, most of them are Lisp routines. Lisp isn't really supported in LT, which is largely the reason why you don't see Express tools in LT, but uh, LT has just never included the Express tools. However, Along the lines, uh, through the years, some of the former Express tools were so popular, uh, specifically the ones dealing with layers, that uh, the development team decided to integrate some of those layer Express tools into the core feature set. So those, at some point, became available for LT users as well. So uh, just because you don't see some of those nifty tools in LT now, doesn't mean that you may not later, uh, with popularity and user feedback, which is vital. We may find out that lots of users use a particular feature that's an express tool now, but it could benefit everybody, including, including LT users. Mm -hmm. So you may see those added into LT at, at some point when they become part of the core feature set. That, uh, that's an excellent point, Zach. Uh, again, there are many features about uh, core AutoCAD that uh, are not included in LT. Um, we do have comparison lists up on our Knowledge Network uh, website. Uh, to compare products, so uh, if you'd like to go there, uh, we'll have a nice comparison between what's included in Core AutoCAD and what's included in LT. Uh, let's move over to some of the other tabs now. We have uh, the featured apps. Again, uh, this relates to the App Exchange, which is now called the App Store. And from here, you can connect directly to the Exchange. And next to this, uh, we have a couple of these apps already displaying here. So some of these are the, the really popular um, add-ins for AutoCAD. So let's just click on one of these. 
And so it should take us to the App Store and display that uh, app. And again, uh, many of these apps are free. Um, some are paid. Um, this particular one is a trial that you can download. And so this is really cool. This is for polyhedral meshes, uh, converting them over to solid objects. Actually, uh, had cases not too long ago about uh, poly meshes in uh, 3D solids, so this is pretty neat. And again, we have many, many different kinds of uh, tools up here on the App Store, and uh, you can sort by product. So if you just wanted to see AutoCAD apps, you can click on AutoCAD here, or you can go down and click on some of the other products we have uh, apps for in the App Store. So let's move back to AutoCAD. Let's go to BIM 360. So this is another uh, really neat tool that I currently support is BIM 360 Glue. And so if you have a Glue account, uh, you can directly glue your models, your drawing files, up to um, BIM 360. So if you click on this, it'll open up your Glue account. And then you can also uh, view your clash results here and attach additional files. Let's go to the last tab here we have in uh, drafting and annotation. It's a performance tab. So this is quite useful um, if you're opening up a support case, uh, if you're concerned about uh, performance issues, uh, you think maybe your software install isn't performing up to, up to spec here, you can run a performance test and get this sent over to support and our performance team here. We can check this out for you. So you can uh, go ahead and click start to uh, start the t uh, performance test and then stop and then view the performance results here. Okay, so we just have a couple more things to cover. I'm going to talk again about uh, model and paper space. So let's go ahead and close out the design feed here and go back to our home tab. So again, uh, you start out by default in the model space uh, where I have my nice 3D box. But we also have additional uh, space here called paper space and they're marked in your layout tabs. So think of paper space as uh, it's going to be one of your main sources of output. It's um, where you're going to be organizing sheets from. Think of it as a, an electronic piece of paper. So here is um, the 3D block that I modeled in model space and showing up as um, is an isometric view on uh, paper space here. And so the nice thing about uh, paper space is that you can create 3D uh, viewports and then uh, plug those here into your layouts. And so by default you start with two, uh, two tabs for paper space and they're showing the same thing. Uh, moving on Another great tool that we use here is uh, the command line. So those of you familiar with um, older versions of AutoCAD uh, should remember the command line here. Uh, you can type in uh, various commands such as uh, if you wanted to change hardware acceleration, graphics performance uh, that you saw up there in the uh, app menus uh, options dialog, you can type in 3D config. And it'll display the uh, graphics performance dialog box. So there you can see uh, what video card you're using and what driver you're using. This is also a great tool if you're seeing some uh, strange graphics behavior. You could try disabling hardware acceleration or disabling uh, some of the advanced uh, effects here below. Another cool thing about the command line is that you can see the command line history. And by default, I believe it displays uh, three lines of history, but you can change that here if you want to display more. Let's go back to model space. 
And of course you can close it out or you can undock it, move it around. You should be able to display your uh, command line history here. So on the right hand side there's a little upwards pointing triangle. And since I set it to display uh, the last 10 uh, command lines, it shows uh, the last 10 here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And lastly, in the user interface, we have the status bar, which is on the lower right-hand corner. Here is another uh, button here where you can switch between model and paper space. So it will show you if you're in model space. And if we go back to the uh, layout tab, it should say paper space. See how that changes? Okay, let's go back to model. Okay. And so we have some other options here. So we have grid options. So I can turn the grid off or I can turn it back on. I can turn on object snaps. I have a few more options here for snap settings. So here's your object snap settings here. And we have uh, 3D object snap settings as well for those of you with uh, core AutoCAD or uh, some of the verticals. And then we have um, orthographic mode. We have polar tracking. We have iso, um, isometric mode. Uh, you can show snapping reference lines here. You can snap cursor to those 2D reference points on the object. Uh, you can show or hide annotative objects. You can set the uh, scale of annotative objects. And here shows the current scale of the annotative object. So from here, if you click on this, uh, you can go ahead and choose from some of the default scales here. So by default, it goes to uh, one to one unless you uh, change that. Also from here, if you don't have your workspace uh, button displayed up there on the quick access toolbar, uh, it will be displayed down here in um, the status bar. So you can click on this and switch between uh, 3D basics and modeling or drafting for those of you who use uh, Core AutoCAD. And we can enable or disable the annotation monitor here. Isolate objects. And again, uh, hardware acceleration. Uh, this will say that it is on. And if you right click it, you can go into the hardware acceleration uh, dialog box just like if you uh, um, went to the app menu and chose it there or if you enter in the command in the command line. And then we have an option here to clean your screen. And further customization tools here. So some of these are um, further dialog boxes for some of the customization. So again, if we wanted to change the snap settings, for example, we can click on that and it'll display the uh, snap tools for 3D object snap, just not uh, 2D object snap. And then you can turn on your UCS, um, you can change your units, or you can lock your user interface. So this concludes the presentation here. We're going to go ahead and open up um, our questions and answers. Um, so Zach, do you have anything else uh, you'd like to add about the user interface before we move on to our questions and answers uh, session? When you're going along the bottom of the status bar there and uh, identifying some of the options down there, one I think that gets often overlooked, maybe underused, is the selection cycling. Ah, yes. So if you want to take a look at that real quick, uh, I think that's one of the, the coolest things that we've added in the past few years. Selection cycling prevents you, or helps you anyway, to select the, the object that you intended to select. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, if you draw objects on top of one another, say lines are in the same exact place on your drawing, 
maybe lines of a, of a rectangle or lines mm -hmm. of a, you know, uh, any shape for that matter, but they're on top of each other, the one that you draw, drew last is the one that you'll pick when you click on it. But selection cycling, when it's turned on, if you've got three lines that are on top of each other and you click where those lines are, it'll pop up a selection cycling dialog for you and it'll you know, indicate that there are three objects there and give you a chance to pick whichever one that you really are intending to pick. So it can uh, help to eliminate picking the wrong object and modifying the, the object you didn't intend to modify. So um, that's one that uh, I don't think selection cycling is the button anyway. I don't think it's turned on along the bottom by default. Hmm. But you can certainly go into the options there, turn that on, and uh, click it to make it blue so it's active. And then any, any time you pick on an object that it occupies the same space as another object, it'll, it'll give you a choice of which object you're really intending to pick. So I, I find that's really helpful. Uh, again, largely underutilized. A lot of people don't even know about it because it's, it, the button isn't on by default. So that's a good one. Excellent point, Zach. Yes, it's uh, often overlooked. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the presentation here and open up the floor to any questions uh, you guys may have. So let's see if we have any uh, questions coming up here. Let's see. Okay, we have a couple of questions here. Let's see what we got. Okay. So it looks like Nauman answered a few of these. Let's see recent ones that we have coming up. And again, we're going to take the next, uh, say, 15, 20 minutes to go over some of these, although um, if we do get a lot of questions, we'll stay until everyone's questions are answered here. So um, let's see what we got. Ah, here is a good one here. Are you discussing right-click menus uh, as well, including how to customize them in CUI? Um, that's a great question, Tom. Uh, we're going to be covering the CUI in a later webinar. So again, uh, if I, let's start this uh, presentation again. Let's move back to here. Let's see. Okay, so I hope everyone can see that. So I briefly touched on the CUI, and from the command line you can click on CUI, or type it in, and it'll come up with the customized uh, user interface dialog box. And again, uh, here you can go ahead and customize um, which tools and, and features are displayed in the user interface, and then you can save that out as a uh, CUIX file, and then you can pass that around between various users and uh, load them up. And the specific area you're talking about, the right-click menu, is where you see shortcut menus there mm -hmm. in the middle. And shortcut menus are context-sensitive, so which object type you right-click on will dictate which right-click context menu content comes up for that specific object. Mm -hmm. If you right-click on a block, for example, you'll have the option to go into a block editor. Whereas if you right-click on a line, uh, you're not going to be doing anything in the line of the block editor, so block editor won't be on your right-click menu. So it's it's very uh, context-sensitive, and you can completely go in and, and edit the right-click menus uh, to your liking and add features and add commands or take them away if you don't use them. Okay, that's right. So, for example, here, we're right-clicking here. You can see that there's going to be different tools available to you um, than if you, say, clicked on this 3D object. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause the presentation again, and we're going to go and check out some of these other questions. Okay. There's one in there from Brooke, and it looks like you're only able to select one line at a time, and usually that's controlled by a variable called pick add, P-I-C-K-A-D-D. And if you go into the options, under the selection tab, there's an option there to use shift click to select more than one object. By default, it's unchecked. 
So pick add is uh, one, a value of one. But if that box is checked, changes pick add to zero. And at that point, you can only click one object at a time. Sometimes that variable gets toggled by certain features in the program. So if you set pick add to one, then that should clear that trouble up for you. Or if you just go into options, go to the selection tab, and take the check mark out of the box that uh, indicates that you use shift to pick more than one object, that should do it for you as well. Hmm. Let's see some of the other ones that weren't already uh, answered by Nauman here. Okay. Ah, here's a good one, Zach. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about this. Uh, this is from Jim and says, can you summarize what is not available in AutoCAD LT? Um, again, uh, we have a uh, Autodesk Knowledge Network article um, displaying what's available in LT versus uh, AutoCAD. So why don't we go ahead and pull that up real quick and then I can post in a link. Let's see, Zach, is there any other questions uh, you want to point out here? Let's take a look. Some people are finding they can't find options on their application menu. If you've got a drawing open, you can simply type OP or options and press enter, or you can right click, and it's also on the right click menu in most versions. Oh, nice. Good point. So I found a link here to um, one of our help articles. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's just display this for everyone here. I'm going to go ahead and start the presentation again. Okay, let's see here on my main screen. So we have um, our uh, product comparison page here. And uh, by default here, it's going to have uh, some of our most popular uh, software packages here. So we got uh, AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD checked, and then um, the AutoCAD Revit LT suite. Let's just uncheck the suite and compare uh, LT versus Core AutoCAD. So uh, again, AutoCAD LT is uh, mostly based around TD drafting and documentation, whereas um, Core AutoCAD has 2D drafting as well as 3D modeling collaboration. So down here where it says features are broken down into different subsections here. So we have documentation, design, connectivity, and customization. Let's talk about some of this real quick. So what is not included in LT? Well, here you can see that um, your parametric constraints, your view creations, your section views are not available. Uh, the express tools won't be available, as Zach mentioned. Um, sectioning and detail views are not uh, available, as well as data extraction uh, to tables. And let's go down here to design-wise. So what AutoCAD LT basically offers as far as design, um, is you have arrays and you have a, a nice visual uh, experience within the user interface here, um, but you will not uh, have 3D tools, as I said. Uh, you won't uh, get the view cube or view styles uh, because by default it's going to be uh, 2D and it's going to use wireframe. Um, it won't have your materials or lighting effects, rendering, 3D modeling, uh, canvas controls. Uh, you won't be able to import your skip files for customization, as Zach mentioned. Um, won't do model coordination um, as well. And so let's move down to connectivity. Um, you wouldn't be able to import uh, third-party CAD data or do 3D printing since it's a 2D drafting tool. And uh, also, you won't be able to use a, a programming interface, um, cloud collaboration. Um, it won't have direct access to the uh, App Store um, or support network licensing or have the performance recorder or um, your CAD standardization tools there. So, and then here, 
after you compare the products and you can see um, you can either compare prices or you can buy or use a free trial here go up for pricing we can expand it here so there's quite a price difference uh, we have annual quarterly and monthly subscriptions and again uh, you're looking at annually uh, 360 bucks for LT versus 1600 for full AutoCAD. So I hope that uh, answers your uh, your question. Uh, let's see what else that we have here. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, pause the presentation again. Let's see. Can I also uh, show that? Yeah, no one. This, um, somebody's asking if you can show how to uh, work with the properties window to the left or right of screen. So if you can, gen in general, cover up palettes and how to kind of uh, put them, you know, and move them around and resize them. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and uh, go back to that here real quick. Okay. So you were mentioning uh, various palettes and like your properties palettes. So if you right click on the object, you can pull up its properties palette. So you can click on that. And uh, by default, it's not going to be docked anywhere, although you can dock it. Uh, if you dock it, it does expand out. And here it's going to display what kind of object that you have selected some of the additional properties. Some of these properties, for instance, in three objects, some of them can be changed, some of them you really can't. You can change the line type, uh, the color um, of, the, uh, of the layer of the object. You can change material. Uh, and then it displays your coordinates here for the object. If I deselect this, it's going to go to uh, basic drawing properties. And uh, let's see here, just a few more things. So if we go to click on the line, it's going to show up the line properties. So if you leave this open, if you leave this docked up and you just start clicking on your objects, it's going to show the properties for those objects. And again, you can undock this or you can hide it if you don't uh, need it for that instance. Um, also, we have a couple more polls here. We got a poll left to run. Zach, why don't you go ahead and run that real quick before we finish up with uh, questions? Let's see here. So, where we got, how long have you been using AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT? It looks like a lot of you um, here today are veterans. Let's see here. But we have a few of you who are brand new to AutoCAD, so welcome. And uh, thank you, veterans, again, um, for your loyalty to uh, AutoCAD. And let's see here. So, yeah, overwhelmingly, it looks like uh, the vast majority of you have been using AutoCAD for more than 10 years. That's cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that poll out. I did see a couple of other questions. Maybe Zach or no one haven't uh, gotten to. Yeah, uh, Zach. Let's see here. So before we hit the top of the hour, we have to get rid of uh, some people who might have to go. Um, we want to run just one more poll. Uh, since this is a, a covering of new features, we want to see if, if there's anything we covered here today that was new or that you may have learned. And of course we always invite any feedback you have for future webinar topics. Well, it looks like the overwhelming majority of you have learned something uh, new today, so that's good. Uh, I'm glad that uh, we could uh, instruct you guys and uh, show you some, some new features here. Um, Let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, it looks like 87%. That's, that's quite good, Zach. Looks like uh, we're doing our jobs. Congratulations, well. yeah. Scott. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Let's okay. close this out. Share okay, let's, let's go ahead and show that. 86%. Okay. Nice. 
Okay, so let's go back to questions here. I know that we had a couple more questions before we wrap up. It's the top of the hour. Let's see if we can't uh, fit one more question in. Let's see. Let's see, Zach, is there anything that you'd like to address? Any of the last questions that are coming in before we close this out? Uh, there's one here that talks about uh, printing more than one page at a time. Uh, it looks like somebody put a video in there, and I'm going to put a video in link for that. Uh, just the one word is publish. That is your command that you want to use for batch plotting, plotting hmm. more than one tab from your drawing, or plotting more than one drawing and several tabs from each. So publish is the way to go there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Let's just close out here. Uh, so again, we have a couple additional resources that you can check out here. We have uh, AutoCAD 2016 Tour the User Interface, uh, about the ribbon, uh, the Knowledge Network Community. And that's it. So I just want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, again, this is Zach's first time moderating. I'd like to thank you, especially Zach, for coming in and helping out today. And I hope to see you all in our uh, next webinar class here coming up in the start of February. We're going to be talking about TD drafting. So thanks, uh, thanks again, everyone, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. We're going to go ahead and uh, end the broadcast now.